14. As we go through this message, just purpose with me, with all of your heart, here at White Avenue Baptist Church, we will be intentional about giving God more glory and the devil less credit. Amen? amen? We're going to give God more glory. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Give God more glory. God more glory. He deserves all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, now and forever. One day we'll be with Him and we'll be able to worship with all of our hearts. John chapter 14. The Lord Jesus Christ, as He, as he looks out into his, in the faces of his, his precious disciples, that have been born and redeemed by the Lamb, of course, uh, washed by the blood, mercy has walked in, and now he tells them, let not your heart be troubled. And folks, you and I know there's a lot of stuff that could really agitate us or trouble us. Let not your heart be troubled. And he tells them something that, that really we just need to put in check. Because it, say, if you believe in God, or you believe in God, but it will also be that the phrase here is this, just like you say you believe in God. I'm calling you to step up to the line and say you believe in me too. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life, right? Amen. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are how many mansions? Amen. I didn't hear you. Amen. That's enough for all of us, amen? amen. Many mansions. And when I saw, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, <laughs> The affirmation here, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, not where I will be, but where I am, there you may be also. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Heaven is a real place, folks. Heaven is a real place. In follow-up to the messages that we've been preaching, First of all, we dealt with the primary mandate of the church. That's to take the good news of the gospel to the lost world. But also to equip the same for work of ministry. Not only are we interested in people being saved, we want people to be sanctified. We want their walk to be holy, amen? amen. We want their talk to be clean, yes or no? Amen. We want their eyes to be fixed on Jesus, yes or no? Amen. So we want to reach people for Jesus, but we also want to have people grow up in Jesus. We can uh, sometimes we have to change dirty diapers, dirty pamphlets here and there, but that's okay because we press on towards the mark of the high calling. So we've got a call. And then we dealt yesterday last week with the uh, the matter of uh, hell. We interviewed, we interviewed a man who was actually in hell, who is actually right now in hell. Today, the other side of it, we deal with the matter of heaven. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, Paul gives us these words of affirmation also. For we know, the word know basically is a faith that solidifies your walk. For we know that if our earthly house, that's our body, this tent is destroyed, other translations said, begin to erode, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands. This house is eternal. And where is it? In the heavens. Where the Lord himself is right now. Now this belief helped Abraham and untold of hundreds of other believers to endure in spite of all of the persecution. My brothers and sisters, those that we read about in the Bible and those that have come before us have had to pay a tremendous price. But I want you to know because of the faith they had in Jesus Christ, they endured. By faith, Abraham, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, by faith, Abraham, he waited for the city which has its foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So now we'll turn to the book of the Revelation. Not Revelation, but Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Father, would you take your living word again? And just make it come alive in our spirits. Help us, oh God, to get away from the earthly and think of the spiritual. Help us, oh God, to understand why we've congregated. That is to worship you, to exalt you, and also to be instructed with your word. Thank you for every year. Now this is your servant who calls upon you and asks, oh God, have mercy upon me. 
and use me one more time for Christ's sake and for the benefit of those who listen today and those who will be viewing the program later today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. So number one, I want to know, but by the way, if you don't have a message outline, if you don't have a bullet, would you raise your hand quickly? I'd like to, I'd like to, okay, right here in front. Okay, the ushers are back there talking. They ought to be over here giving you. Would somebody go and give these brothers an outline? Good, 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 good. Uh, if, you're right, if you don't have a bulletin, it's got a message. I really want you to take one. Let me tell you why. But it's not so much of what I say. It's what's in there. And that word is in there. Now, raise your hand if you need a bulletin. Right here in front. I see that hand. My brother. Amen. Anybody else? Quickly. I want you to have one, okay? I really, really want you to have one. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. Right here. Take one. Take one. They're free right now. Once I get going, they'll cost you. <laughs> Amen. So number one on your notebook, heaven is a new place. Heaven is a new place. Write down the word new. How many of you like new things? Amen. I like new things. I like it when my, when my honey goes to conferences and she comes back renewed. She loves it when I'm in the word and I come before her renewed. We all like new things and renewed things. We love it when there, there's a glow of God upon our lives and when there's a blessing of God upon our church and the, and the help of God and favor of God upon our church. We like it. But heaven is a new place. Now, the Bible says, this is John, as, he, as God allowed him to see things that he could bring to us. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Stop there for just a moment. The implication is that some things are going to pass away. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The passed away. Now in Revelation 21 and verse 5, Jesus said, Behold, I make all things new. I make all things new. Now, if he makes all things new, that means that you and I can anticipate something wonderful when we get to heaven. If you have loved ones that have already graduated, that have already left this planet, you can be thinking of it. They have just entered into something beautiful, something new that the Lord has prepared for them. Now, in the book, in the book of Revelation, verse 12, there's a scripture, verse 12, I want to read that also. I also saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. For her husband, excuse me, for her, singular, for her husband. Now, how many of you have ever gone to a wedding where you see the bride still in orders? Hair all messed up. Or maybe the dress all. Have you ever gone to a wedding where a bride whose dress is just all wrinkled and all? No, that wouldn't be fitting, right? Hair is nicely made. I mean, she has spent zillions of hours putting on a new mask and a nice makeup, uh, and the dress is beautiful. Where, where do you think that those of us who are early can get that concept of a, of, of a bride nicely adorned? We get it from the Bible. We get it from the Bible. Now, the bride is, is reference to the church. That's us. And the husband or the groom is a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. But notice, prepared like a bride adorned adorned for her husband. And how do we adorn ourselves for our husband? The Bible says that our works will follow us. So here's a fact. Out of the book of 2 uh, second, uh, second Peter chapter 3, it's on the screen. When it comes to those of us who maybe think, thinking that we're going to be here forever, here's a word, a fact that out of the Lord does. Look what the word of God says. This is Peter, the apostle, giving us a prophetic word. This present earth and its atmosphere it will be burned up. But the, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Now, a thief in the night, just think about that counselor for just a moment. Has anybody ever been a victim of somebody stealing something from you? Yeah. Okay. Did that thief give you a heads up? Did he call you, hey, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to break into your house. Would you make sure you leave some coffee on there? No. A thief comes when you least expect it. And so that, that's the idea, when you least expect it. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away. But notice, with a great noise. How many of you heard that this morning there was an earthquake in the Bay Area? Amen. 6.1. Yeah. Wow, that's a heavy one, 6.1. I don't think they had a heavy one like that in a while. 6.1, a great noise, a great noise. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. How many of you know that right now, that the 
countries have the capacity to destroy entire nations right now in nuclear warfare. How many of you know that? Amen. That's, that's a problem. At one time, there's a, oh, this is far fetched. In, in, in the 1800s, 1700s, people would say, all oh, those are things that, that preachers just make up to scare people. Blah, blah, blah. We see that that's possible today. And, they, and they, of course, will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the words that are in it will be burned up. The earth, the earth number one, will be burned up. The works, and all, all that man has put together, those nice houses, those nice buildings, those nice, all that, that we work together, and both the earth and the work that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, somebody say therefore. Therefore, therefore that's a connection. Therefore, because you have this fact, therefore, because you know this, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought to be in holy conduct and godliness? Because you know this, there ought to be a striving, there ought to be this intentionality of you of wanting to be more like Christ, Christ likeness in your life. So, now heaven is a new place for new people. Heaven is a new place for new people. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 tells us, Behold, if any man be in Christ, he becomes a brand new creation. The old passes and everything becomes new. So again, Heaven is a new place for new people. How many of you anticipate being in heaven one day? Amen. I don't know how. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I believe with all of my heart that one day I'll be in God's beautiful heaven. That's a promise He's given us. That's a promise He's deposited in my spirit. And something tells me that He is going to fulfill that in my life. I will be in heaven. So heaven is a new place. Number two, heaven is a glorious place. Heaven is a glorious place. It's glorious because of the glory of the Lord, right? But notice, the, 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 the Apostle John is being carried out. He says, and he hears the word, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb, the lamb's wife. That's the church, by the way. If you have a pencil or a pen, mark on the word, I will show you. I will show you. God is wanting John to see something. He wants to see where the church is. I will show you. I will show you. Now, then it goes on in verse 10, show me, he showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, that has to do with heaven. Now, if you want to underline, I will show you, that's to happen, that's future, and then show me, that's past it. Not only does he show him where the bride is going to be, he shows him the new Jerusalem, which is heaven. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is 21 verse 2. We've already read it, but it merits reading again. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. The marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. So this is a glorious picture. It's a glorious picture of Christ and his church. Christ being the group, the church being his bride. So again, let us be glad and rejoice. Notice the scripture. Let us give him glory for the merit of the Lamb has come. His wife has made herself ready. And notice the next scripture. And to her, it was granted. It's like a, a, a privilege. It was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is a righteous act of the saints. What's going to follow you into heaven? Your righteousness. 